I want to go over the top 10 common mistakes that you could potentially be making with your print on demand business. Now I've jumped the gun here a bit. You might not be making any mistakes whatsoever, let alone these 10, but hopefully this video will help you anyway. If you are new here, my name is Shimmy Morris. I talk all about print on demand, affiliate marketing, making money online, side hustles, all of that kind of stuff. And feel free to check out any of my other videos on my channel. And if you like what you see, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Let's get right into it with number one, expecting immediate success. Many people set up a print on demand company because they think it's going to be easy and they're going to get sales very quickly. This could be because maybe they've watched a YouTuber who's told them it's going to be easy or they've read a blog post or they've seen people have serious success and they've thought, hmm, it's going to be really easy for me to do it. This is wrong. It takes a lot of hard work and it is far from easy. Around one in 10 entrepreneurs actually create a successful business. So you have to ask yourself if you have a full time job, you are going to have to dedicate a lot of your spare time on this side hustle to actually make it work, which is why I made a video a couple of days ago talking about how either choose between print on demand or affiliate marketing, specifically if you have a full time job, otherwise it will just become too difficult for you to be juggling all these things at once. So bear in mind, it's not easy. It takes a lot of hard work and dedication. Number two is selling generic designs. The print on demand industry is huge. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And as a customer, they are spoiled for choice when it comes to designs. So you want to remember that when you're creating your own designs and rather than just copy everyone and make the exact same designs, the chances of you getting sales is so slim because the customer can choose between 50 of the same designs. What you really want to do is find a niche and create unique designs in that area that people may not have seen before and that way you don't have to be worried about competition. You could use tools like Google Trends, Merch Informer, Etsy Rank to find out what is trending and what designs you know could work that you could tweak and make your own and of course make unique and then sell and hopefully this will help you get more sales and become more successful with your print on demand business. Number three, don't try and compete with Amazon Prime for delivery. This business is literally called print on demand, meaning when someone buys a product from you, they have to, the company has to literally make that design, make that t-shirt, let's say, and print it and send it out. Right, it's, it's not a next day delivery kind of business. Now, of course, you have Amazon Prime who do next day delivery, but don't try and compete with them. It's very, very normal for a product to take seven days, sometimes even 14 days, for it to arrive to the customer. Now, if you're selling on Merch by Amazon, you will have access to the Amazon Prime, so your customers could get your t-shirt the next day or at least two days later, but if you're not selling on Amazon Prime, you should focus on quality designs that your customers will be happy to wait two weeks for rather than mislead them and tell them, super fast shipping, you're gonna get this so quickly. Just don't even bother with that. Hopefully, if you create really good designs, they will come and buy anyway. Number four, doing it alone. With print on demand, it's not just about being a good designer and being able to create really cool designs. There's a huge element of marketing to it. And in fact, I've actually created a video right here that you can go and check out where I talk about marketing and designing and the different type of person that, you know, works with print on demand. And, you know, I personally, think that marketing plays a much bigger part to the print on demand business than the design. A lot of people will disagree with that. That's just my personal opinion. But nonetheless, there are two elements, designing and marketing. It's very rare that you have someone who is incredible at designing and incredible at marketing. You know, it's, it's normal not to be good at two things, right? And what you'll actually find is if you're good at designing, it's much easier to learn how to market than if you're good at marketing and you need to learn how to design. So what I would say is, don't be shy. If you're good at one, try and message people, friends, family, acquaintances, someone online, and see if they will bring the other half to the table. So if you're good at designing, maybe try and work with someone who's good at marketing and work something out together. Do a 50-50 split and create this epic business of incredible designs and incredible marketing. Number five, being as clear as possible. 
So most customers want to know exactly what they're getting. They want to know the exact process of you know, having to return it or talk to someone if there's a problem. They don't want to have to figure things out. One of the first things I do when browsing on a brand new company that I haven't used before is check out their refund policy and their terms and conditions. And that is just because I want to know who I'm giving my money to, right? Is this a, a dodgy company that's going to cause me havoc down the line? No, I want to work with someone or you know, not work with someone, but I want to buy something from a company that has a good return policy, a good customer satisfaction rating. I want to know that. And so do print on demand customers. With a lot of print on demand companies, returns isn't really your problem, right? You can't really do anything about it. If you're selling on Redbubble or Merch by Amazon, you know, you're not, you don't really have much of a say in terms of returns. So what I would recommend doing as the seller is reading the fine print of these different companies and make sure they have a good return policy. And if you're selling on your own website or with Etsy or something, make sure to really explain your return policy and your policies in general and be really, really clear because if a customer sees that or if a person sees that, there's a much higher chance that they will trust you and become a customer. Number six, selling too many variants. Having options is good. You know, a black t-shirt, a blue t-shirt, and a white t-shirt, but having too many options is bad and it causes analysis paralysis. Analysis paralysis is the inability to make a decision due to overthinking a problem. An individual or a group can have too much data. The result is endless wrangling over the upside and downside of each option and an inability to pick one. So when creating a design and deciding on how many colors, maybe pick three, black, white, and you know a color that goes with your design, or maybe just pick two, but don't think, oh, if I pick less colors, I'm going to make less money. No, this isn't the same as having a few products. We're talking about variant of colors here. So try and keep it very, very minimal so that people, when they come onto your page, they can just immediately pick something and buy rather than just sit there like, what should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Let's leave it, right? You don't want that to happen. Number seven is selling t-shirts only. Since you don't have to actually pay for inventory, it makes so much sense to put your designs on as many different products as possible. T-shirts, hoodies, sweaters, mugs, pillows, tote bags, you name it. Having this huge range of products allows you to reach so many more customers. And this isn't the same as what we just spoke about with analysis paralysis, because this is a totally different product. So having multiple products allows you to reach so many more people, right? I'm not saying have variants of an individual product. I'm saying have lots of different products. Take advantage of the fact that you're doing print on demand, because if you were doing normal retail and you wanted to sell phone cases, t-shirts and hoodies, you would have to buy inventory for all three items, right? Which would cost you a huge amount of money. But as I said, because you're in print on demand, it doesn't cost you anything extra to actually add more products to your line. Number eight, investing in ads too soon. Advertising is a great way to bring more traffic to your store. Now, in this video, I'm not going to go into detail about advertising that needs its own video. What I will say is if you are going to invest in advertising, make sure that your store is 100% ready. The policies are all there, the about me page is all there, the products are there, the good images are there. You don't want to send traffic to a store that doesn't look good or ready. You need it to be 100% ready so that you can increase the chances of actually turning traffic into sales. Number nine, not getting reviews. Product reviews add so many benefits. The main one being social proof, but as well as that, it also allows your customer to see or, or read about your product from perspective of another customer, which is great because that's exactly what they want. They want to see what it would be like if they had it. And of course, they can't trust you because you're trying to sell it to them, but they can trust your customer reviews. By having lots of reviews, you add a whole new element of trust to your website. So if you're not already asking customers for reviews, what I recommend doing is on the thank you page, leave a link to actually leave a review and then do an email follow up asking to leave a review. And then maybe 20 days later, after you know they've received your product, send them another email follow up and ask them, you know, have you liked the product? Please leave a review if you haven't already done so. And hopefully this will actually increase your chances of getting more reviews, which will lead to more sales. 
And finally, number 10, not following up. In so many businesses, they follow up with you via email, via text. Sometimes they even phone call you. Yes, I know it's really annoying and most of us absolutely hate it, but there are a lot of people that are happy to help. And the reason why this is so beneficial is because if you can learn from a customer's journey why they bought from you, where they came from, and why they chose this particular product and this particular color, that will help you sell more products because once you know a customer's journey and a customer's thought process, you can adapt your marketing and your sale and your sales and your, your sales page and all these kind of things to that customer because you know chances are there's going to be a lot more customers like them. Now you can get this information via a survey with a text or an email. Email is probably the easiest and you can use a program like SurveyMonkey to actually get them to fill out a survey. And if you want to incentivize this survey, that would be a nice thing to do. So giving 25% off their next order or free shipping or something like that. But again, at the end of the day, this is really, really valuable information that you could use to get more sales. Those are the top 10 potential mistakes and solutions that you could be making in your print on demand business. Let me know in the comments down below if any of them apply to you and if so, which ones actually apply to you. And as well as that, if you are new to the channel, you've just subscribed or this is your first video, say hi in the comments down below because I would love to, you know, have a dialogue and respond to you and introduce you to the channel in a way. And finally, I just wanna say massive thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.